Welcome back to The Breakfast, and it's time for us to take a look at what some of the headlines are saying this morning. And we begin with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with states paying governors jumbo pensions owe three trillion naira debt with a rider. TUSU wants governors to pay workers' arrears, experts play jumbo packages. On top of the mask, there you have 86 senators will support me, says Akpabio. Details of that you find inside the Punch newspaper on page 18. Operators demand top sanctions as Nigeria loses 303 billion naira to oil thieves. You find details of that on page 25 of the Punch newspaper. Why I rejected request to visit Tunubu. Brother George, details of that is on page 14 of the, the Punch newspaper. And that's the much I'll be taking from the Punch newspaper. Away from the Punch, uh, we'll move on next uh, to the Nation uh, newspaper. Oh, the main headline for this morning, Tinubu is best prepared ever for President Says Akode. Uh, with the writer, the expert uh, expect 50-year master plan from incoming administration, what to do on economy. Above the masthead, the senators uh, reps for inauguration in makeshift chambers. All right, and then um, NEC, uh, that's uh, the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, bars uh, discos from billing disconnected customers. Norwood actor Murphy Afolabi passes on. Then just uh, below the pictorial there, there is a story on rising food prices. Cash crunch push inflation to 17-year high. The last story there, uh, 60 senators have signed on for Akbabio Barao, says Ndome. Those are the major stories on the Nation newspaper this morning. Okay, from the Nation newspaper, we'll move to the Guardian newspaper, which is leading with 17 years after Paris Club relief, external debt rises to $41.8 billion. Well, details of that is on page 8. This, I believe, is an editorial. Of, of the Guardian today. And you go down a bit, you find amid criticisms at Mavio Widen's consultations, gets backing of 68 senators. Details of that is on page six of the Guardian newspaper. 2,518 Nigerians evacuated from Sudan, says Natcom. Well, details of that is on page three of the Guardian newspaper. And then you have fuel subsidy, suspend disbursement of $800 million loan to FG Serap, urges World Bank. Details is on page three of that. And then you have despite hike in bill, Lagos fuels waste worsen. Details is on page four, it's a special analysis on Lagos there on the Guardian newspaper. All right, the last paper we are looking at this morning is the nature and these uh, we have to protect our environment. All right, the banner story for this morning, climate change concern over 2023 farming prediction. Farmers lament deaths of rain. Uh, there is rain today. Government moves to develop food system transformation pathway. Then another story, man pledges support for green manufacturing. That's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, man pledges support for green manufacturing, then electricity, federal government to deploy 5 million solar power connectors to communities. Uh, those are the main story. Then on the green strip there, on the 17th AFCON, Yahaya Lawali makes CAF group phase uh, best 11. Those are the stories on the Nature uh, News this Monday morning. And we have been joined by our analyst, Okmunabo Unkoteria, a political affairs analyst joining us from River State. Good morning, Okmunabo. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning, Nigerians. Yeah, good morning to you. How was your weekend, Okmunabo? Good to have you join us again, as always. I know you expected an answer, but you can't. <laughs> well, I'm still alive. Thank God you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just jump right into it. The part the is uh, political system. I'm still alive. <laughs> 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 well, the Punch newspaper is leading with states who are paying themselves, uh, state governors who are 
outgoing governors paying themselves jumbo pensions uh, while the states are owing three trillion naira debts. And TUC is warning the governors uh, to pay workers arrears. Here they are paying themselves this huge amount of money as they are living, maybe after four years or eight years. Meanwhile, workers are being owed. Uh, t t talk to us about this. How, how is this hitting you this morning? Despite this happening, that governors these days are even on pension, uh, pension. You spend four years, max eight years, and you're being pensioned. Meanwhile, you are yet to pay those who have spent 35 years in office. Most of them are being owed uh, 10, 10 years, 15 years, five years pensions, and that too. That goes to tell you that most of these governors are in, greatly insensitive and callous. I read somewhere where, I think, was it the Taraba State? Dairus is Taraba or which state? Taraba. Darius or Darius? That is, that is Darius. Yeah. Yeah, that's Darius. Who is, uh, who? Sorry? That's the rubber Darius, yes. Yes, I heard, yes. Yeah. Who, who recently spent billions buying SUVs for himself, his wife, his deputy, and the deputy's wife? I understand he's come out to deny well, that. I understand he has come out to deny that, but uh, whether he's telling the truth yes, or not, he has, come out, to be he has seen. come out to deny that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, why is this governor that they saw how many dollars in his pocket and still denied it? They say pictures speak louder than words. He still denied it. And what happened? Well, mm. probably because he has immunity. But the truth about it is that most of these governors are quite insensitive. They are not bothered about the welfare of those they govern. They see it as an opportunity to loot the treasury. And for those that will not return to office, it is like the final looting. I have to steal. Even most of them that could not even afford a car are today planning to buy jets. And they want to sustain that lifestyle, even out of office. But the truth is, if you don't invest, you cannot even sustain it. Because and before you know it, you must have fleece your account. Because you want to sustain a particular lifestyle. Now, to avoid that, they now got themselves pension. At the expense of those that they govern. You see them owing salaries. You see them owing gratuities. You see them owing pensions. Most of them did nothing in their states in the last... Eight years, most of them. Open up, the idea of Open up, this yes. is not the first yes. time that this is happening. I mean, we've seen all the governors in the past who are locating themselves these huge pensions, yet here we but are still talking few, about the it. likes of Fashola, Fashola rejected it, uh, PKB rejected it, but the others. But the others went ahead. That's but how I mean. come we've not been able... You can't use one brush. Okay, you are saying something. Yeah, yes. I'm saying uh, we keep, um, you know, uh, kicking against these things in words, on television, on radio, Nigerians. But um, nothing has been done to change it. The only thing that can be done to change it is by going to court to stop. Now, for those that have been caught, you can prosecute them. There has to be a judicial pronouncement on this. They have to tell us that it is a matter of rights. Because if it's not a matter of right, and you're doing that to loot the treasury, then you should go in for it. But the sad aspect, again, is the state assembly must come up with the law. And you all know that the state assemblies are ministries of lawmaking in the assembly law. They are not really house of assembly. They're not superintendent. They are just ministries of lobbying. When the governor says this is what I want, they say yes, that is what it was. And they pass it to the law. And that's why most times you find out that most of these state laws are almost like military decrees. It is whatever the governor says that the lawmakers do. So how do you really end it? Because you know, it's just they, 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 they are subnational. And to a very large extent, the state assemblies are the ones that make the laws for the states. Unless it has to do with concurrent, that's with the federal law. Hmm. In which case, the federal interest must be protected. So, if the state should come up to say, the legislative government will say, you are no governors entitled to, even the issue of pensions and so on, the governors maneuver it through the state's assembly. 
And because the state assemblies are rubber stamp assemblies, I call them Ministry of Lawmaking in the executive branch. Whatever the governor says is what they do. It's so like a hand Do you concept. see this as having come to stay? Because as, we, as I asked, it's not in changed. We've been crying about it. The assemblies, that until you have an, a state where you don't have one party dominating the whole assembly, where you are going to have dissenting voices, and maybe practically if the numbers are not equal, they're not apart, I'm talking of the legislators, you just have one or two, like just like the way the National Assembly after inauguration will be, you look. Unless you have that, this will continue. Because before the governors buy these cars, they are going to tell you they must have gotten approval from the State House of Assembly. The Assembly must have approved. So if the Assembly should approve that, how does it become illegal? It's no longer illegal. That's why I said there has to be a judicial pronouncement on that. If there's a judicial pronouncement on that, then the, house was, the hands of the House of Assembly, uh, uh, the House of Assembly members are fettered. Mm. So it has to look at the River State, where you cannot. There was an injunction, the most ridiculous injunction I've ever heard, where you cannot investigate the accounts of the state. Have you ever heard that before? The River State account is insulated from prosecution and investigation. And the EFCC is just sitting there, doing nothing, uh, chasing shadows and enemies. This is an issue. It is an because issue. Because that is a cover up for fraud. Mm. The matter, it was Dr. Peter Dilly, who, 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 who went to court on that? And of okay. course, you know, no governor is going to challenge that because but the all the successes are going to be beneficiaries. All right, open up. So, no government. All right, open up. So, so somebody has to go to court. All right, so that we can. And these are, the issues that the ELCC, these are the issues that the ELCC should face. All right. Uh, because let's, 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 court, you go that you, you go to Supreme. Mm. All right. Uh, let's I'm just talk about the, the self pool <laughs> of corruption in the state. But why are Nigerians not issue, going to the, court? The idea of purchasing cars for themselves, 200 billion. You see, it, it, it's so callous. I, I, can't, I can't imagine how you would not pay salaries, you would not pay pensioners. They are dying in their numbers. And you have stolen enough from the treasure already, mm. and you are thinking of stealing more to spend After it. You leave. Mm. And you want God to, to forgive you? I know that Kuriwa. Kuriwa, the At times I wonder, because most times these, 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 these thieves live longer and stronger than you, the innocent one. So if, if the punishment will come in, uh, after death, then I will also become one, because I don't know the after. Let me enjoy it. All right, open up. Let's still stay with um, the Punch newspaper. Another story that is, uh, you know, trending, and most people are talking about it since um, over the weekend. Uh, there's some pensions, some prisoners, rather, prisoners, some feeding. Uh, <clears throat> it's on the green strip there on the Punch newspaper. Uh, prisoners feeding. States uh, fault federal government seek new revenue formula. From what we hear, the federal government says it pay, it spends about a million naira on um, each uh, uh prisoner, you know, yearly. Uh, Maureen and I broke it down to about 83,000 naira monthly on each and prisoner. But then when we go to our correctional centers, uh, the situation uh, leaves so much to be desired. 83,000 naira per person monthly. Is that what you said? 83,000 naira. Yes. Yeah, it says uh, the federal government claims to spend down uh, 1 per million per person, on each per, uh, per prisoner. No, but you know that's not true. That's quite mendacious. The federal government cannot even spend 20,000 naira on one human being in this country. That is just an avenue to feather somebody's pocket. It's not possible. I'm not saying it's too much to feed one person in a country. Uh, well, a prisoner. I'm not, that's what I'm saying. If a civilized, if you say, tell me this in a civilized, I'll believe you. Because when you go to the prisons, or correctional centers, and you see the way they have been taken care of, you will also be impressed. Because that is where it is actually a correctional center. Mm. They are not there. They just want you to absorb those, spurge of those, and bring you back to the society. They are, treated, they are like under titulates. But in Nigeria, they should not change. The human pleasure is not the problem. They are still prisoners. And they are treated as such, subjected to all kinds of inhuman a, a, a treatment, and you say you're spending 80 something thousand naira per day. That's how they tell you of this uh, preschool feeding. Look, 
that money is getting to do somebody's point. Have you been to the prison? And if you are spending 18,000 naira per prisoner, what of the structure? You are yet to take care of the structure so that it becomes habitable. Hmm. You are not even addressing that. And you are saying on feeding, you are spending 83,000 naira on the prisoner. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That money is getting into somebody's pocket. Hmm. I don't believe that. It's a clear case of mendacity. The government cannot come and deceive us. We are too intelligent for that. So I don't even want to go into the truth is the figures mentioned, that is a complete lie. It's not possible. Not even under this government's government. School feeding, how much did they say they were spending on the school children? Even when the schools were closed, even COVID, they were still spending on school. school. This government that has no trust, lacks trust. With mouths dripping with walls of interposition and notification. They say one thing in the morning and do another thing in the afternoon. How can they tell you that's, that's the amount of spending on prisoners? And look at the prisoners, looking like quite chock of human beings. Prisoners are fed mostly by family members, not by the government. Those that depend on the government who are criminals and the family members are ashamed of. Go and look at them. Go and look at them. They look like people, in fact, sicklers are worse than, are better than them. Those of them are sickles are better than them. Those who suffer from AIDS are even better than them. Now look at them. Then they are spending how much? 83,000 naira. Huh. You cannot even pay the 35,000, 30,000, or even 35,000 minimum wage. You have not paid. Then you are spending 83,000 naira on prisoner. How can you come and tell me that nonsense? You, you, must, you must be suffering from intellectual anemia to come and tell me that. You are civil servants who have not paid. You are civil servants. You are owing. Then you, but you are spending on prisoners. And the salary of the civil servant is less than half of what, the, what you claim you are spending on prisoners. Who are you telling that? Me, Ubnawi Mbogaria. Well, they have, your head they, 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 they have given the figures, and um, I guess as it stands, you either take it or leave it. Nigerians either take it or leave it. No, 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 other... no, 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 the question yes. I meant to ask is this. So they've given out the figures. It's either Nigerians take it or leave it. Should Nigerians not take it, what should they do about these figures given to them? That is, that is where investigation, post-mortem, comes in. That is where it comes in. That is why we have to hold the government accountable, both in and out of office. If this matter is investigated by professionals, accountants, if this matter is investigated, they will be able to unearth the fraud and bring to book all those involved in that fraud. And the EFCC should not check its responsibilities. It should not abdicate it. The EFCC is not there just to interrogate those that the government want them to interrogate. These are, these are the things. They've come up with figures. EFCC is aware of this. IPC is aware. I, IP, is it IP, I, what is it called? ICPC is aware of this. It's within the cognizance of these uh, 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 agencies. So what is expected of them is to investigate it and bring all those involved to book. Because yes, you will say that you are prejudging, but there are certain things you tell me, and I don't even need to investigate or ask God. You cannot come and tell me that you created. Uh, Obnabo, and I say yes, you have said it that there has been no no ounce of truth in there. You have not even been able to pay your civil servant. You have not, and you say 83,000, 83,000 naira of prison. Okay. Because you know that you cannot go to the prisoner to have secrets. Somebody is dead, you are using that money to feather somebody's pocket. Let's move to the Guardian so newspaper. The ESC and ICPC should investigate this, 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 this claim. Thank God the government is saying yes, this is what they are spending. So it's not a question of, are you sure or you are not sure? Okay. Now, they should, these bodies should investigate and bring to book all those involved in that fraud. All right, let's move Starting to the headlines. With the minister. Let's move to one of the headlines. And including the president, if he's guilty, because by that time he would have lost humility, including the president.
Yeah, let's move to the headlines on the Guardian newspaper, which is uh, uh, 70 years after Paris Club relief, external debt rises to $41.8 billion. Uh, what's your take on this issue of <laughs> Nigeria's debt? This issue of Nigeria's debt, rising <laughs> debt. Oh, God of Israel. Christ. Eh, what a country. They are going for $800 million. They have not finished. Don't be surprised. Another one will come again. This time around, it will be inauguration, the loan for inauguration or whatever. They are going. The government that criticized the Buhari's government, uh, sorry, the uh, Jonathan's government, most is this present government. There was nothing they did not say against Buhari, uh, Jonathan's government. But they performed worse than the Jonathan's. How much did Jonathan or, or Jonathan owe when he left? Or did he owe when he left? How much? They have almost tripled what Jonathan left. And why are they borrowing? They are borrowing to build, uh, build railways, bring in trains, do that. Now the trains are not working anymore. And don't forget, you're paying for the, because it's a contract. You're paying every day for those services, whether you use them or not. It's like a, uh, a plane at the airport. You're, build, you're, you're borrowing money. Look, even when we export our, our crew to import refined products, and look at how much has been put into the NNPC. Since 2015 to date, that a look. And this was this this was the final that we have to turn around in like six months or one year. You're spending. Meanwhile, you're paying workers. Your the, the workers are still buying cars. You're buying cars for the executive. The security men are there. Stationaries, all kinds of things. The only thing that is not working there is the refinery. But you're paying for every other service. You're still employing. How, how, how rudderless can the government be? And you're borrowing. You're not borrowing. You're borrowing to uh, sustain uh, 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 your, your, your frivolous lifestyle. You're traveling abroad. Look at the number of people you travel out with. Collect these figures, put them together, and you realize how much we waste on daily basis. Meanwhile, there is no commensurate uh, 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 service. Every time we are boring, we started with train, we entered a uh, plane, we entered uh, all kinds of things. And worse of all, the crude. You take your crude out, refine in other countries, and pay again to bring the crude. And now we are going for diesel for 1,000 naira per liter, 800 naira per liter, depending on where you are. All right, open up. So let's, uh, let's uh, move on to the next. We will borrow. But the most annoying thing is that most times we borrow for the useless reasons. Mm. And that's why we don't have the effect. If it will practice socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor, the people borrow those in fact and they will borrow to empower themselves, and the poor masses suffer the problem. Open right. up, open That's up. What this, this issue of our refinery is not working in spite of the huge sums of money allocated annually for turnaround maintenance, which you have alluded to. Do you ever see this narrative changing? Because this is one of the reasons why those who are kicking against um, subsidy are saying that it is nothing but an organized crime against Nigerians. Do you ever see this narrative Thank of you. us not having working refineries as a you, country ever changing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good question. You see, it will not, unless you have somebody that sincerely wants to lead, wants to say, it has to do with the president. It's a cartel. But, you see, the president, if he really wants to crush that cartel, he can. But most times, their hands are tied because when you're contesting, this same cartel will approach you and give you money. 
So even before you are sworn in, test it, for example, you have about 10 persons, or no, three persons contest. No, 10. They wait for, they watch out for about two strong or three strong contenders, and they are pushed. Take, this is our support. It happens. When you get into office, your hands are tied. But you also have somebody that says, no, I don't need your support. Thank you. Or, fine, give me your support. Like what they do in most of these Italian countries, in Italy. Give me your support. He gets in there, he tells you, no, it's all over. That was what led to one, a government in America, the death of a government in America, where he, was, he agreed with some of these uh, thinkings. Mm -hmm. When he got into office, he said, no, I will not honor that agreement. Of course, eventually he was killed. In the 60s, he was killed. So it depends on the individual. And most times you surround yourself with criminals. Because those criminals are the ones that aided you, that assisted you to succeed. And before they came to you, before they agreed to work for you, certain agreements, you know, accommodation was reached. Okay, if I get in there, this is what will happen. If I get in there. Look at, imagine the, what the first lady said. He said, every time they vote money for presidential, they are so villa, lady. Yet, there is no needle there. It's a cartel. Yet, they vote every month. She said it. She said it. So, for the refineries to work, the president must be sincere and must be willing. It's a question of will. Must be willing to say, this refinery must work. Once you have a president that wants the refinery to work, he's in charge. He's in charge. Everything should be bounced off at his table. He has the information that nobody will have as that former president. For the new ones, he's the only one that has certain information. All he needs to do is give an order. That's all. I want this thing done, and it will be done. But if the president is also complicit, maybe not because he's getting money from them, but because of the role they play in his uh, assumption of office, he means quiet, inertia sets in. It's not that I will tell you after all, I'm not the first. Uh, let me go, like Gwari kept saying, let me go, let me go, and I asked the question, are you tired? Are you nailed to the chair? Why did you hand over to Osiban? Since one year, I'm tired. Why did you hand over to <laughs> I think that would have been some level of sanity in this country. For one year, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. I'm All right, tired. Open I, want to go uh, I want to go to do. Why did you hand over to Osiban? Did they tie your hand? Did they tie your hand? But you serve out here. All right, open up. Let's look at one more issue as we, as we round up for the sake of time. Uh, open up. Uh, let's look at uh, what's brewing uh, um, at the Senate uh, with the Senate leadership and all of that. Um, uh, on the Guardian, the way it was um, aptly written here, amid criticisms, Akpabio widens consultations, gets backing of 68 senators. Does this surprise you? No, it doesn't. You can't, you can't take away Akpabio's political sagacity and his big match. The guy is, the guy is good. I, 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 is one man I admire, so to speak, politically. I am only angry with him that um, to me, well, the court has said, but to me, he stole somebody. He's not supposed to be. He stole the man. Say that again, he did what? He connived it. I know he, he stole, stole that man. I said, stole stole because he, how did he imagine? Now, he did not, how did he, he, he was in court. I said, well, the court said, fine. Eventually, they had a reconciliation with the man. No problem. But it was an infraction. He, the law said, you cannot sign to nomination form. You sign the presidential and sign the, the senatorial. How? Let's call it state is oh. That's my only anger. If they went to court, he won a court of, of, uh, court of first instance. Then eventually, that's why I said, it's brief, you can't tell, you can't tell, he reconciled with the, this about, first, uh, there's an infraction. That's one thing I don't like. Aside from that, there's one man I like. You like him? Uh, yes. No, I like him. I like him. What I like, did, what no, you say to those, what do you say to those who, he loves you, he hates you, yes? Yeah, what do you say to those? So who, be, what do you say to Nigerians say who are saying that he has a man who has case to answer, cases to answer with the EFCC should not even be considering such a position until it is substantiated 
until it is, those might be his enemies, but, or they might be right as well. But until it is substantiated, it's innocent. That's the adversarial system practice we have here. Until it is substantiated. Because they can even come to you, your enemy can come to you. No, it's politics in Nigeria. Just like you read what you do, and many things you see on Facebook. So, now, let me quickly respond to the issue of uh, his chances of emerging as senior president. They are quite high. Although, I would have wanted that seat to go to southeast. Not just south, southeast. In the interest of fairness and justice. The north, the southwest, the north, right? Then the uh, southeast to take. Or they give the southeast the speakership. That might pacify them. But considering the tension this issue of segregation is created, I think they're not giving it to the southeast. Because the presidency ought to have come from the southeast. That's the truth. Now, Akabia has that affability. He has what it takes to convince people. The affability is there. He's a good talker. He has the dough, whether I like it or not. Money will be spent on this. Of course, he has, he has said that what money cannot solve, more money if, can solve. In fact, I am telling you, the primary thing will be the money before the other qualities. And because he is being chosen from the Tinubu's camp, of course, you should, you should know that that will not be a problem at all. Even Akpabio himself can do that. So, I, becoming a senior president, my only worry is that he's going to be a senator like Okadibo, a senator like uh, Bukala Saraki, and not this lame dog, Pomatos senator, the senator of Lawa, who also stole the tickets. I don't want that Lawa, that is the, this ninth assembly kind of assembly. God forbid it is the worst in the history of this country. <laughs> God forbid it. Never in the history we are going to have, have, the, have that kind of assembly. Never. Yes, sir. And the president himself was the one who said, the senior president, that we are not here to fight. We are whatever the president says we will do. Shame. Oh, well, open up. You lost. Opunabo, time will not allow us to continue yes. with all the press. We can't go beyond this point at this time okay. Uh, okay. today. But thank you so much, as always, for joining God us on thank you. the press. God thank bless you. Nigeria. Thank yes. I join you in that prayer. God help Nigeria. God help. After the help, we'll go to bless. Night is help. God help Nigeria. After the help, we'll go to bless. Thank you very much. Thank you, Opunabo. <laughs> Do have a great day. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> well, you're still watching The Breakfast. We'll take a short break and come back to look at our very first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>